Yesterday, NFL Sunday slate delivered from beginning to end, didn't it? Oh, oh yeah. yeah. Just the way the day ended last night on Sunday night football mm. with all eyes on him. And although it was a 10 and a half point spread, which is way too large of a spread <laughs> for a game to be on Sunday night football this late in the season, probably should have got flexed out of Sunday night football, but didn't get flexed out of Sunday night football because Jerry Jones. Mm -hmm. What's going on? What's that? Is the owner of the Dallas Cowboys mm -hmm. and also one of the leaders of the media negotiation rights deal. So allegedly, he and the Cowboys are going to be on primetime all the time because all the networks think it's the right move because they're going to be negotiating with Jerry Jones whenever it comes to the next media rights deal, which is already worth $110 billion. Who knows what the next one's going to be with more streaming platforms. And also the Cowboys have a massive fan base. Everybody knows it. The marketing role of the America's team with the winning that they had back in the day has generated a massive fan base so you're never going to see the Cowboys get flexed out of Sunday Night Football even though last night as a Colts representative because I played for the team I think we all wish going into the game it would have been flexed out of national television so mm -hmm. not everybody had to watch that and learn a lot of new things uh, about the Indianapolis Colts huh? that Chris Collinsworth was talking about the whole time <clears throat> yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. and after the game I wish it would have got flexed out of primetime so that everybody didn't have to watch and learn about mm -hmm. this Indianapolis Colts team that we've been a fan of for all year now um, you did see the stat, 10 points in the first quarter is more points than any amount of all the points combined that the Colts had before Jeff Saturday became the head coach in the first quarter. That was a good stat. Yeah, you guys saw something really great. Good. Felt like it was a close game, 21-19 there for a little bit. We were in it. We were working. We were doing our thing. Then a couple turnovers happened that just looked very bad. Then a 33 to nothing run Ooh. in one quarter of football Christ. was seen by everybody. And, and maybe a lot of people fell asleep. But it's certainly being talked about because it is the Dallas Cowboys and it was on prime time. So everybody has to remember, remind everybody, remember what the Dallas Cowboys did, not only to the Vikings, okay, yeah. but remember what the Dallas Cowboys did to the Indianapolis Colts. Never good to be a part of that conversation. Now, no. the Vikings are all the way back. They're going to go on a run. They're going to do their thing. Colts are in a bad spot. I mean, this is turnovers and. Malik Hooker, who we drafted in the yep. first round, had a pick, then a fumble recovery for a touchdown. So, good. Hey, happy for you, Malik. Hey, there you go, Malik. Happy you're finding success. In his school, Ohio State's back in the college football playoff. That was just a terrible throw to a guy that shouldn't. Granson, Grayson's on the field. I appreciate him. I'm happy he's on the field. Where the fuck is Jelani Woods? We have a six foot seven guy who isn't playing so that that guy can play. He wasn't <laughs> open at all. That guy's not open. Not his fault. Probably shouldn't have threw the ball to him. Had to play against Tony Pollard. Obviously, he's doing his thing. But you, you wouldn't have known this from watching primetime last night. We have a tight end on our team who is six foot seven. Six, yes, six foot, shoot six foot seven. Yep. If he was in the NBA, they say he's six nine. Because mm -hmm. in the Ooh. NBA, they measure people with their shoes on. In the NFL, they push you down to the smallest you could possibly be, barefooted, so that everybody's the same exact measurement uh, across the board. Six seven, barefoot, push down, scrunch down, don't stretch out your spine at all. NBA, 6'10", probably, yep. with the way they measure people in the NBA because they want everybody to think, oh, these people much taller than everybody, which they are. But also when you see them in their shoes, they're not the smallest they'll ever be. No, that's exactly the height that you're seeing, 6'10", 7'1", whatever the case is. The NFL is the opposite of that. Shoot 6'7", he's on the team. Not on the field. No. no. When he's on the field, Matt Ryan throws him the ball. He scores touchdowns. He does his thing. I have no idea why. This is two different coaching regimes now. It is. Two different offensive coordinators. Yeah, wild. One who's 31 years old and getting his first shot at this because he's the only person that knows the offense and understood anybody that was on the team. Mm -hmm. uh, but also, like, when Frank Reich was calling plays, he was never on the field either. It makes no sense to me. I'm utterly confused about it all. And it does appear, boys. Yep. Oh, no. As if we stink at football. Yeah, yeah. it does. It yeah. does appear like that. It's 100% how it appears. That's the talk to table at Boston Connor at Ty Schmidt. Great to see you boys. Uh, one half of the hammer. Don. Cowboys turn yeah. digs is there. But I was watching that game last night just thinking the Colts fucking stink at football. Yeah, yeah. It was right. crazy. Or at least one position. Why do you stink at fucking football? It doesn't make any sense. We paid more money at quarterback position than any other program and franchise in, <laughs> yeah. in the NFL the last four years. Offensive yeah. line, highest paid in the league, right? Yeah. Camp, can't do. Can't do nothing with either of no. them. Mm -mm. We got a six seven guy can't get on the field. When he does get on the field, he makes plays. Mm -hmm. That's right. We got another guy, Granson, probably a good guy. I don't know him at all, but doesn't appear to be able to get open. And nope. if he if he did, could Matt Ryan hit him with the ball? <laughs> you got another six seven uh, guy too. I don't know. Not just one. You got two.
Alec Pierce made a couple good plays. Yeah, he, he, might, I think he, he's he looks good. like he's a guy. Every once in a while. <clears throat> He'll make a couple of those plays every once in a while. Now, I think he's going to have to get more consistent, but will he get more consistent with a quarterback that puts it in his area more? Like, that's a great throw from Matt Ryan. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That's a great, great Absolutely. ball. Great contested catch. Yep. I mean, he caught that thing on a shoulder pad. I mean, this dude could be a guy, but will we ever know if he's a guy? I don't know. We're going to have another quarterback probably sure. next year. Right. Exactly. Probably a new offensive coordinator next mm-hmm. year. And then Hopefully. what if that doesn't work? New and then, coach. Anyways, Colts Pierce stink, but uh, thanks for letting us be on primetime television so everybody can see it. Yeah, that's good, Ron. It was a good three quarters. I mean, it really was just that fourth quarter. It felt like they were in the game. Yeah. I Until agree. then. I agree. I agree. It, it just – Let's flip. This. Let's flip the conversation. Okay. Yeah. By the yeah. way, I think you have one more primetime game. That's how good we were supposed to be. Uh huh. Just week thirteen, Sunday night football. Colts are supposed to be in it. Mm-hmm. Okay. Because Colts are supposed to be a good team. Absolutely. Monday night football, Pittsburgh Steelers. We we're supposed to be a 13. good team. I think we got another one coming up. I don't know if it's Monday. I, I think, think it's Monday. Monday. Night, yeah. yeah, Monday Chargers. night against Chargers. Monday against the Chargers, supposed to be a good team. Both teams there. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. Supposed to be good teams. Yeah. They're out right now. That's how disappointing it has been. That's, that's what the NFL schedule makers thought of the Colts and then what it has been. Already fired a coach, going to have to do a bunch of turnovers. We fumbled the ball 30 times. Oh, that's a lot. This season. Matt Ryan accounted for 12 of them, I think. Mm-hmm. Does no one care about the program? Does anybody care at all is what I was wondering while watching that fourth quarter. Like, what is the deal? Jeff Saturday, I got nothing but faith in that guy. Hell, yeah. Yeah, yeah. This team gets beat the same exact way, I think, if Frank Reich's coaching. Now, who knows? We'll never know. Agreed. And Frank Reich is a good guy, had moments of being a great coach. For whatever reason, it just wasn't working this year. But is it the locker room, maybe? Like, Oof. what's going – this team was supposed to be so good. The fact that we had to fire Frank Reich is because we weren't doing well at all, and the team seemingly had no soul. It just was, like, yeah. dead almost. It's like, well, this – is maybe coaching. Maybe this is coaching. Maybe this is 100%. Frank Wright gets fired. Here we go. New energy. Jeff Saturday beat the Raiders, who hey, are back. They're good. All of a sudden, pretty good at football. Yeah. Okay. The Colts beat the Raiders. Got new energy. This roster that was supposed to be really good beginning of the year has now found what they need to do, and they're going to get really good, and they're going to get rolling. Boom. That's not the case. That no, has not happened nope. in Alaska. And I don't know who all and how all they're going to fix it. I assume Jeff Saturday is not going to be the head coach of the Indianapolis Colts next year. I have no idea. I haven't talked to anybody with any of that type of information. I'm just assuming here. Now, Jeff did say a couple things in the interview about how much he's loved being back in there. Mm-hmm. Will he get into coaching? Will he want to be the head coach? I don't know. That's a conversation to be had. But they're going to have to turn that over. I don't know what you do with the locker room, though. There's a lot of long-term contracts in that yeah. locker room. Yeah. And they're all in leadership positions, and it seems like that team has not really been like, uh, you know, I, I think you can tell about the team leadership whenever you watch a team. Like, how about, you know, the Chiefs just losing to the Bengals? So we can talk about both of those teams. Mm-hmm. Sure. I think at the positions of importance, they got it. And then I assume that their culture and their leadership is one that's like, hey, mm-hmm. we win games. What are we talking about? Joe Burrow was pissed off last year whenever people were saying, the Cincinnati Bengals, why not us? Why not us? He's like, that's a bit disrespectful. Why not us? What? We have much higher expectations than the somebody's going to have to win it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Why not us type aspirations? Like, I think he's a leader. Like, I think he's a guy that's going to show up every single day. I think Jamar Chase works his ass off. Got yep. fresh out of rehab, uh, missing a bunch of weeks because of injury. 100 yards or whatever, does his thing, makes Dog. some insane catches. The one that didn't count, banana land. Yeah. So I just think, like, that, that type of locker room stuff obviously has to be addressed as well. And it seems, and I don't know the locker room as well. I tried to talk to Quentin Nelson at one time when I won an interview. That's yeah. right. He's he right up there. Like he's it. right up there with Rondale Moore uh-huh. yeah, exactly. as one of the worst the interviews we've ever had. Sure. And that was face to face. That I, every continent but Antarctica and Australia I've been on. Mm-hmm. Pretty good conversations with every human I've ever run into. Like <laughs> sure. pretty good. I think like actually mm-hmm. find some common ground. Somewhere. Yep. Different languages having conversations sure. with people. I was in Japan having full conversations with people, typing things up on my phone, switching the um, the keyboard to Japanese, mm-hmm. typing it up there, putting it them, having full conversations. Pretty good. Yeah. yeah. The Penguin Bar? Anywhere. Yes, the Penguin Bar. Had a great time. Yeah. Learned everything about it. This is Japanese. They can't, they, this is in Japan. They speak Japanese. Couldn't have, had conversations with people. Full convos. Been to Spain before. They don't speak our language. Been to France mm-hmm. before. Been to Germany, been to Austria, Morocco, been to Morocco, been to Portugal, been to Canada, obviously. Yeah. Mm-hmm. There's a common occurrence here. Been to Mexico. Yeah. Oh, nah. down there. Ecuador, Theron. Well, I've never been there. But <laughs> mm-hmm. 
head down there. I think you take some trips elsewhere. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's right. <laughs> I've been able to talk to pretty much anybody anywhere. Mm -hmm. Like that's that's one of the things that I not only enjoy, but I also am pretty good at. Quentin Nelson sitting right next to me, ten minutes, no, nothing, no, fucking no. no sell, none at all. I'm like, all right, this guy, all right, I guess he's just a fucking. You know, just a straight yeah, shooter. All about business. All right. Uh, and I respect it. I left it. I'm like, all right, I fucking love that this guy just beats people up and he's this type of guy. I wonder if, he, is he a vocal leader in the locker room? I don't uh, know. It doesn't don't seem know. like it. I don't know if he is a vocal leader, but he seemingly is a guy that is setting the precedent for the team, right? Because he got paid. He's a captain. Yeah. He's mm -hmm. a dog. He's going to go down as one of the greats. He, I don't know if he's a talker. Ryan Kelly, I think he probably is. He plays well. Yeah. How much sway can he have over everybody? I don't know. Is he the one that? Like he's supposed to get DeForest Buckner. He's a big-time yeah, leader, sure, great yeah. speaker. He's been on the show. Is he supposed to get it going? I don't know who it is, but somebody needs to figure it out in there. And I don't think – I don't know who the coaching change is going to be. And a lot of people are attacking, you know, me and Jeff Saturday right now for the whole thing. I don't know what coach goes in there and does well with this team. Yeah. I honestly don't – and it makes no sense. Yeah, no it way. makes no fucking sense. None of us – I don't understand it. I thought they were going to be good. I thought it was going to be a great year. Last night, getting just fucking railroaded by a team in the NFC that might be representing the NFC in the end. Sure. This Dallas Cowboys team is a lot of fun to watch, are mm -hmm. they not? Now, it happened to be against the Colts, so that's no fun. But the fucking Cowboys showed up in a big way. They got two massive wins. Now, Dak Prescott has been, you know, CeeDee Lamb's on stupid. Yeah, that was yeah. awesome. <laughs> just, just absolutely stupid. And then earlier in the night, or later in the evening, he ran like a jet sweep. Yeah. And then he cut... He hockey slid. Yeah. He yeah. actually <clears throat> sprayed like it was a full on shh, one of those yeah. on the turf and cuts up field. And it's like that type of body control, because he had to prepare for that. He planned that. Like when you're playing Mario Kart and you use a little drifty drift yep, whenever sure. you hit the L1 or whatever it is, you're planning for that. He was running and planning for a fucking, uh, uh, like a tail, like a, like literally a drift. Mm -hmm. And then he cuts right up field. It's, He's a freak show athlete, yeah. C.D. Lamb. And I don't know if we've ever – I guess we have seen him make big plays. But, like, what he did last night, if they're going to continue to use him in that particular mm -hmm. fashion and he's going to continue to do that, like, they got a, they got a, a number one. They mm -hmm. got an outright number one who's yep. unbelievable. Gallup can make some fucking big-time plays. Mm -hmm. Obviously, Ezekiel Elliott, and he came out and spoke about how last year he wasn't necessarily as good with Tony Pollard getting his touches. Yep. But then I came to the realization that it's much better for the team with how explosive he is for him to get the touches. So shout-out to Zeke. Yeah, hey, that's a good deal. That's a little me, big team uh, type mindset, which yeah. everybody was pinning against Ezekiel, too. You're getting paid this much, and this guy's doing this. Collinsworth made an uh, insightful comment last night. He said, in goal line and short yardage situations, Ezekiel's in there. That's not good for your average, but it's great for the team. Sure. So anytime anybody wants to mm. compare the Tony Pollard to Ezekiel Elliott, like yards per carry, he said he thinks that puts it to bed a little bit. But nonetheless, they got both of them, Schultz, and Dak is playing. I oh, mean, yeah. fucking yeah. Dak is absolutely playing. I... Uh, I'm happy for Big Mike. I'm happy for the Dallas Cowboys. Being down in that stadium, it's so fucking nice. Yeah. yeah. That Huge. stadium is so fucking nice. I was down there, obviously, for the Big 12 championship. They might be a real fucking contender. Plus, you